All right, next here is the library function. The library function entails everything you've created or added to this program. Right now, it's pretty much a clean scratch, and it's always set to actors. But I'm going to go left to right so you kind of know what it is, and, and you can do a few demos yourself because it really doesn't hurt anything, just adding and subtracting. The first thing you have is the scenes, initial scene. This is pretty much the stage of what you see right now. And uh, it pretty much that's what every scene is going to be about. So if I add more scenes and switch them, you're going to have the same thing until you start adding things. And you'll notice when you click up here on the scenes, it's going to change that scene name for attributes. And if you want to get rid of a scene, you don't like it, and you're ready to get rid of it, you can plop it away. All right, the next thing is layers. Layers, are I've learned recently, are very important. It helps you organize all your stuff you include in the scene. From the background, which is, right now, it's the black means nothing. It's just, you can put a little stage on there, a little picture or something like that that you want in the background, and it'll be put in here. And it, each layer you put on top will put in, like say, the characters who move, the controls, whatever, you know, if you have multiple backgrounds that you want to do something. So it's very important to do that. And it's really neat because you can close and open layers once you have stuff plopped in. And you can even name them. Just double click on it, change your name, and push enter, or just click on that blue area. Actors. Any object or, or you know, type of act, you know, action, sound, anything you want in this stage that does something is an actor be it uh, you know your little hero Mario just side scrolling your little shoot em up plane doing whatever it wants or an invisible one that's a timer to say you know something else is going to throw be thrown at you it could be anything in the world to create an actor you just plop that in there and next you can have an actor to work with and you'll notice the backstage automatically whatever you click on well actor or anything that it wants Anything that needs uh, coding done will do work that's backstage. All right, so well, how you put an actor into the scene is really easy. You just drag it and drop it. And right now, the default thing, if you have nothing defined as an actor, is a white square, which you can resize as big or as small as you want. You can rotate 360 degrees. The way Game Salad works, it's 0 to 359, not 1 to 360. So be careful on how you work with angles. And we'll go with angles later. If you want to delete an actor, do the same thing, M minus. You'll see here, for all, it has a little tag on it, like a price tag. If you have enough, what you want to do is you don't want to run through 150 different actors. You place them in tags. Say you want all your, your hero parts in there. If you want your villain parts in there, or, you know, any sprite type things, if you have multiple things that make them move. If you have multiple backgrounds, you can throw them all into our tag called backgrounds. Really neat and effective. Trust me. All right. Media. Any images and audios you want to do. And right now I've got it set up to where little cars will appear. And so I'm going to pick maybe the gray one. And so I have this, and I want the car, gray car in the scene. If you drag the gray car media file onto the screen, it's going to create a second actor. There's the car, and you notice it doesn't show anything new, but there's actor 2, and it shows the gray car. If you want actor 1 that you've already created to be the gray car, you have to go down to the attribute scene, click on actor, and you notice there's nothing there. Go to your media file, click on your gray car, and drag it there and suddenly you have two cars now because you have two actors and let's say you didn't want that second one you can delete it and now there's only one okay that's a little bit with attributes we'll cover more on that later so now you know about media files you can do the same with sound it, or you can work with wave files i think wma and uh, ogg files or whatever files if you pull a WAV file in, it's automatically going to rename the file an OGG file, so don't panic when you see that. It can still play it. Next thing, the most important thing for the coding, this affects the backstage. You have blocks, uh, a group I haven't discovered yet, so as soon as I do, I'll put an update. Rule is your if-then statements, and the way you work with rules is click on your actor so it opens up your coding. 
click on whatever rule you want to do, drag it in there, and you can have with all of the following, that means you can have a whole bunch of stuff conditions to meet, or any of the conditions to meet to make your say car do something. Second thing is a timer. You can have a timer in here, or you can have an effect as a timer. And it says like every five seconds you want something to happen. For five seconds you want something to happen. And after five seconds you want something to happen. Pretty easy. We're not going to do too much with the timer though. You'll get the condition. All right, conditions. This works with if, then, else st statements all the time. And the most important one you want to do is if you want your car to move, you want it to move uh, when you push a key down. And that's my favorite thing. It's like if I want something to move like Pac-Man, I just do and push a key. Notice I'm not going to type. I'm going to push the up button. Uh, let's do the down button. It just automatically fills that in. And so when the down, when the down button is pressed, not released, I want him to move. So let's go find a behavior you want him to do. You can have him accelerate and accelerate towards, but right now that's kind of advanced. Let's go to move. So what's going to happen? He's going to move in the direction. Let's do the direction down. This circle here is an automatic direction finder, and you want it to do 270. That's straight down at a speed of 300. Leave the rest alone for now until you really know what's going on. And now we want to test this. We want to see this car move down. So in the stage screen, push play. And there's the car. I'm going to push down. You keep going, but you can't push up or anything else. All right, enough of that testing. The final thing is tables. If you keep scores, you high scores, any type of things, tables are important, but that's kind of advanced, so we're not going to describe too much more with that. All right, be right back, and then we'll start going with uh, the next table that's dating.